Fathers set the character of the family. Fathers set the character of the family. 82% of boys follow their fathers. Statistics says 82% of boys follow their fathers. So fathers, make sure what you do. And you know, one of the main things that I want to tell and I want to talk today, it's a father's day sermon, but I want to just take a second part of this. Alcoholism, whining, alcoholism is one of the most dangerous thing that church is facing. My heart was broken when one of one of one of my uh, friend just called me and said, "You know what? I got a proposal from a Pentecostal guy, and in this proposal, it was written he's an occasional drinker." Amen. And and then one day me and Damjan were talking. Damjan said, "I came back from just Florida. How many DUI driving under influence Pentecostal boys and girls?" Somebody who is listening to me on internet. Now I want to make a very clear message about alcohol. Party drinkers and all those are carrying something nobody is drinking. But these people are growing in a culture. But I want to set a tone for these people. Amen. And everybody who is listening to me on internet, share it as much as you can. I want to bring the real thing of alcohol to you. A very dominant and prevalent issue in Christian churches. You know what? I took almost six months to study on this. And I'm bringing my research. It's not, you won't find it anywhere in the internet. Let me bring your, my research to you. 31% of all high school students are somewhere under the influence of alcohol. Every day, 11,300 teens taste alcohol for the first time every day 11,318 teens alcohol is the leading cause of death among the teens and youths the death due to alcohol is more than suicidal or any other things in every 30 minutes someone is killed in alcohol related crash 6,000 babies are deformed every year because of the use of alcohol. If a pregnant mother drinks a glass of wine every day, there is 75% of chances of having a deformed baby. So alcohol is a problem. It's a big problem. Bible talks about this. I want to bring you. But many, from, from these many years, there are Christians who are confused about this alcohol. And I am bringing these things to you. You know what? Social drinking, party drinkers, occasional drinkers. After reading this whole thing that I'm going to teach you from Bible, I will tell you, ladies and sisters who are single, it is better to be single than to be married with an occasional drinker. Amen. It is better to be single the whole life than to be married to an occasional drinker. Occasional drinker will, will very soon become a professional drinker. Part-time drinker, he will change into a... He will. Part-time drinker. I am ashamed when I heard about even in profile in shani.com and in many other.com, Pentecostal boys have written about occasional drinking. Part drinks only during party. What a Christian you are. And I want to bring the whole thing. There are four things that the Christians debate on why they drink. That they take for themselves. Why they drink. First thing is, Jesus turned water into wine. Second thing is, Jesus and disciples, they drank wine when it was Lord's table. Third thing, Paul instructed Timothy to, to drink little wine for his stomach issues. And fourth thing is, Bible says, drunkenness is sin. Drinking alcohol is not sin. As long as you are not drunk. Fourth thing, we will deal all the four things. Alright? And that is my sermon today. And I, why I am teaching this? Everybody should learn this. And when somebody brings this thing to you, 
teach them, talk to them. You just copy this message and send them if you cannot teach. But I want to tell you something. All right. You know what? The wine word is most misunderstood word. Like love. You know, I love my puppy. I love God. For both of us, for both the things, the word is? I love my wife. I love my puppy. The word is? <laughs> okay. So, love is a common word. But in Greek, there are three words. One is agape. Second is phileo. And third is eros. Agape, love towards God. Holy love. Filial, friendship, friend, friendly love. Eros, love between husband and wife. Sexual love. More into that. So there are three words. But in English, for everything is love. love. So we don't distinguish what kind of love is that. This is exactly what happened with wine. There are nine Hebrew words and four Greek words for alcohol, wine, and grapes. Nine Hebrew, Old Testament is written in Hebrew, so nine Hebrew words there. Four New Testament Greek words are there. Sheena, if you can bring that one in. Yeah. So nine words for wine in Hebrew, Greek four words. Now look. For in Hebrew, yain. Yain is a word that is for fresh juice. What is that? Fresh juice. That is non-fermented. And in Greek, the same yain is said as oinos. And oinos means fresh grape juice, non-fermented. When does a, a juice become alcohol? When it is fermented. fermented. Come on, come on. I want you to listen to this very carefully. When does this become alcohol? When it is fermented. fermented. So for fermented alcohol, Greek words are shikera, oxos, very strong wine alcohol and the biggest alcohol is methusma. Methusma. So these are other three words. And the fourth word is oinos. Got it? Can I get some good? Yes. Alright. So people who claim that Jesus turned into what? Water into wine. Jesus drank wine. Timothy drank wine. And drunkenness. We'll deal all these four based on this thing. Okay? Now I want you to go with this. There are 627 times the word alcohol is in Bible. How many times? In Bible, there are 627 times. And in 624 times, Bible says no to alcohol. Be careful. Away. Dangerous. 627. 624. Total 627. How many negative? 600. And there are only three words that talks about the three words of wine that is talked about neutrally. And those three are Jesus turned the water into wine. Second is Jesus and disciples drank wine. And third is Paul saying, Timothy, you can drink a little wine. These are the three words in Bible that are said to be neutral for alcohol. And we will come to that too. Now listen, let's go for the first thing. Uh, Jesus turned water into wine. John chapter 2 and verse 3. You know, John, okay. This is interlinear Bible. I don't know if you can read that. This is Greek interlinear because I want to give you proof and let this, if you can focus this on one, uh, Stanley, if you can just focus this one here. Now listen. Ah, uh, and they when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said unto him, They have no wine. Okay? What is that? They ran out of wine. Let's go to interlinear Greek. Where is wine here? Here, right? And of making wine. What is the spelling here? Oinu. And what is oinu? Non fermented grape juice. Oh, I know. What is that? So, when when the marriage banquet was there, that was not a fermented wine. That was not an alcohol drinking. It was not a party drinking. It was a fresh juice. And Jesus walked in. 
and he turned the water into okay when, can you turn that portion telling you read two verse what when he turned into wine okay now when the ruler of the feast has tasted the water that was made wine now we are first wine was something that exhausted right that finished second wine that was made by jesus what kind of wine is that where is that wine okay here what is that oh you know oh you know oh you know it's a noun and verb form what is that so what was jesus that turned into fresh grape juice is that clear do you need more proof to this okay number 2 okay first is some okay that was one thing second jesus and disciples they drank wine after passover right let's go to matthew 26 matthew 26 and and word you know Matt, no, if you can go to the verse, if you have the verse, verse, uh, okay, Matthew 26, okay, Matthew 26 is written that it was a Passover that Jesus wanted his disciples to organize, right? Do you agree with that? Hello, do you agree? It was a Passover celebration, right? Passover celebration, Jesus' disciples had their Passover, and after eating Passover feast, Jesus, what did he do? He took bread, gave thanks, and said, This is my body, and do this in remembrance of me. And then he took a cup of wine and gave thanks to the Lord, and he said, Eat and drink from it. Right? This is what he said. And when was this? Straight after Passover. Let me, I want you to read the rule of Passover. Exodus chapter 12, verse 15. The rule of Passover. Exodus chapter 12, verse 15. Okay, now read. So this day shall be you, shall be to you a memorial. This is about Passover. And you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord throughout your generation. Come on, everybody. Come on, listen here. Now come and read this. Throughout your generation. You shall keep it as a fast by an everlasting ordinance means an ordinance that will never end. end. Then a rule that is not going to be broken in any way. Alright, then what? Seven days you shall eat unleavened. unleavened bread. For the first day you shall remove leaven from your what is what do you mean by leaven? Ferment. Fermentation. Yeast. That means when you are doing your Passover thing, Passover thing, there should not be anything fermented in your house. Don't take fermented bread. And also, if that's the case, Bible says, don't keep anything fermented in your house. So wine and alcohol is? Do you think in Passover day, Jesus took a fermented alcohol and drank? No. I am bringing you facts. Let the church know this. Youths and kids know this. Okay. And then this is what it is, right? And then you should know. So, when Jesus was and disciples, when they were doing this Passover feast, do you think they changed this everlasting ordinance? Do you think that? No. He never changed that. So, going forward, going forward, I have a lot of things to say on that, but leave it. So, again, referring to verse 29, go to PowerPoint, verse 29. Uh, Matthew 26, 29. Okay, now listen, if you can read this. The same day when Jesus gave bread and wine to disciples, this is what Jesus said. But, on the same chapter, right? Come on everybody, can you read that? But, I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of wine. So Jesus is making more clear. What, what, what were you drinking? Fruit of wine. What is that fruit of wine here? Ampelo. Ampelo means syrup, fresh syrup of grape juice. It's very clear. Okay, let's go to the third verse. Paul instruction to Timothy. First Timothy 523. First Timothy 523. Let's go to interlinear. Okay. Drink. Come on, everybody. Can you say this? Drink 
No longer water, but use a little. Okay, where is wine here? What is that? Oh, you know. It is not a fermented water. It is not a medicine also. It is a fresh grape juice. Then you always eat, drink water. Come on, drink some juice. When you when, when wine visit you, you guys ask me, right? That's what water. Juice, drink it, juice. And this is what exactly Timothy to Paul said to Timothy. Man, you always drink water, tap water or water, lake water. Come on, drink some. Oh. Did you get what that's what I'm talking about? Bible never talks and never encourages about alcohol or drinking alcohol. Bible is against it. Amen. And let me tell you, Calvary Assembly, what Bible talks is something that we need to think about. And Okay, now the fourth question. Drunkenness. How, how close I can go to that line without drink, without sinning? How close I can go? Drink, drunkenness, you know, drunkenness is sin. I'm, I'm, I'm drinking, but I'm not getting. Okay, what is the, forget about God's rule. What is the state rule that state considers that you are drunk? Point eight percentage. Five ounce, one fifty ml of wine is enough to make you drunk. One fifty ml. Drinking a glass of wine at night and boozing down and saying that I am a Pentecostal guy. Shame on you. Church, you know what? I want to tell you all the young brothers and sisters who love party, not in Calvary, I know that, but those who are listening to me, who love party, going party, doing the things, and drinking wine whole night, saying, and then coming, oh, God is good, all the time, stop this nonsense. And don't say that you are Christian. Bible is against that. God hates it. Okay, Romans 13, Verse 13 and 14. Let us walk. Come on, everybody. Can you read? Let us walk. Come on, come on, everybody. Please, please. I know you're tired, but let's read. Let us walk properly in the day, not in revelry and drunkenness, not in lividness and lust, not in strife and envy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ. And we are, we are not picking any other things, but I'm bringing drunkenness. So drunkenness is forbidden. Don't walk. Six out of 627 words, this is one word. Okay, let's read 1 Peter 4, chapter, chapter 4, verse 1 to 5. Therefore, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourself also with the same mind. For he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. He, and he no longer should live the rest, the rest of his time in the flesh. flesh for the lust of men, but for the will of God. Then, the next verse. For we have spent enough of our past lifetime in doing the will of the Gentiles. Gentiles have been lust. What is that? When we walk in limitless, lust, drunkenness, rivalry, drinking, party. And a Come on, guys, girls. It's not just guys, girls. Oh, yeah. We are living in America. Got it? God is against this. Go to the next verse. Galatians 5 16 to 21. I say that, come on, read together. I say that, walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh. Lust against the spirit and spirit against the flesh and these are contrary to one another so that you do not do what the things that you wish but if you are led by the spirit you are not under the law. Now the works of flesh are evident which are, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, livingness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, Contentions, jealous, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, carelessness, envy, drunkenness. I know I have 
talk about other things too. But I'm talking about drunkenness. Today is the day for drunkenness. Oh, boy, I'm going to kill it today. Drunkenness is sin. It is sin. Brothers and sisters, don't tolerate the spirit. It is sin. Okay, do you know for adultery, how many times why we use adultery word? It's only 75 times. For lying, it is just 82 times. For stealing, it is just close to 100 times. The most hatred things that Bible is Bible talks about is our alcohol. 600 27 times. Pastor, you don't speak about other things. Why do you speak about wine? Because Bible says the most about alcohol. Christians, can Christians take alcohol? No, absolutely no. Okay, let's go with Proverbs. Okay, there are other things also in 1 Corinthians. Leave 1 Corinthians and go to Proverbs 21. Okay, read together. Wine is a mocker. Strong drink is a brawler. And whoever is led astray by it is not Stay away from drunkards. You know, there are people, you know, brother, I'm a good Christian, but you know, night time just to refresh, I take a wine. As soon as you hear a friend doing this, stay away from him. Because he is going to influence you. He is going to influence you. Okay. Proverbs 23, verse 20 to 25. Now read together. Do not mix with wine babblers. What is this wine babblers? Now after drinking wine, oh, you know where are you going? Wine babblers. I actually, you know what? All right. So do not mix with it's not Shibutas. It's Bible. Amen. Do not mix with wine babblers or with gluttonous, gluttonous eaters of meat who always want meat. Huh? Cannot eat anything else on the night. Glutton. For the drunkard and glutton will come to poverty. Very soon, your bank will be zero. And drowsiness will clothe a man with rags. Right. Instead of suit, you will be wearing rags. Listen to your father. Come on, say it loudly. Father. Listen to your father who begot you. And do not despise. You know what does it mean? Young people, over here. What does it mean? Father who begot you. That means father who gave you birth. That's everybody will say, man, that's okay. But father who gave you birth, even though he's an alcoholic, he will say, please don't bring that. And do not despise your mother when she is old. old. Okay, go in. And then, okay, chapter 23, verse, okay, at the next one is, yeah. Buy the truth and do not sell it. Also wisdom and instruction and understanding. The father of the righteousness will greatly rejoice. We were talking about this. That's fine. Let's go to Proverbs. 23 verse 29 to 35. Everyone, please listen this. 23, 29 to 35. Read together. Who has who has who has who has who has, who has, who has come on louder. Wounds without who has redness of heart. Answer. Those who linger long at the and those who go in search of uh, Crocker doesn't get good brand, man. Come on. I literally have to go to brand. Huh? Searching for mixed wine, new wine, good wine. Okay. And then do not look. Come on, read it louder. Do not look on the wine when it is. Because that is the time when you want to look. When it sparkles in the cup. Oh. I love that, right? When it swells around smoothly, you know, swells around smoothly. At the last, it bites like a serpent and stings like a viper. Pastor, I never saw this verse in Bible. Bible? No, it's something.
something else. Come on, look. It is Bible, your Bible. So drinking wine, how is the poison? It is like the poison of a serpent, viper. It will bite you and you will not live. All right, come on. Okay. Then next saying, and there is another saying too. What is that? Your eyes will see. After drinking that, what will your eyes see? Oh, strange things. And your heart will utter. Uh, this is what happens after drinking. I started seeing great things and Huda started uttering perverse things. Oh. Man, this is in Bible. And then, yes, you will be like one who lies down in the midst of I am floating, man. I am floating. Oh, what an experience is that. And then, or like one who lies in the top of the mast saying, they have struck me, but I was not. They have beaten me, but I did not feel it. How will you feel it? You are? No. Dear brothers and sisters, this is what's Second idea. Leaders, totally forbidden. If you are in any leadership of church, it can be any kind of leadership. You play music, it's a leadership. You sing songs, it's a leadership. You preach, you are an usher, you are a Sunday school director, you are a you are a Sunday school teacher, youth leader, whosoever it is, in any capacity. Now listen to this. Leviticus chapter 10, verse 9, 10, and 11. God said to Aaron, you will be as a, in a leadership position, right? So God said to Aaron, come on, sir. Say, what is someone read? Anybody who is in leadership of any ministry, do not drink wine or intoxicating drink. You nor your sons. Because 100%, you, if you drink, your sons will drink. You are an occasional drinker, your children is coming up becoming professional drinker. You are a part-time drinker, your generation will be a full-time drinker. So, you and your sons with you, and you go, when you go into the tabernacle of meeting, lest you die. In Old Testament, said, if you are involved in ministry, don't even touch that. Because when you get into the throne of grace, you will die. What is there in New Testament? Okay, New Testament. Let's go. First Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 to 7. Okay, come on, read. This is a Okay, this is, by the way, First Timothy is in New Testament, alright? Alright. This is a faithful saying. If a man desires a position of a bishop means leader. It can be a preacher, it can be a music leader, it can be a musician, it can be a Sunday school teacher, anybody. If you are teaching, if you are instructing teachers, bishops, he desires a good one. A bishop then must be blameless. Husband of? Not one at a time. Not throughout life. Alright, okay. Husband of? One wife. And then, temperate, sober minded, of good behavior, hospitable, able to teach, not given to wine. Let me remind you this. I don't know, but I'm, I'm not talking about Calvary Assembly, but everybody who's hearing me online. I want to remind you, I'm so sorry to hear the stories of many Pentecostal churches whose leaders are using this. I, I, I recently I got just a news, you know what, come on for Bible study. Beers are in the fridge, whiskeys are in the, on the table, and coffees are brewing. Come on for Bible study. I don't know from where they got this concept. Brothers, I want to tell you. You are somewhere wrong. You cannot be in a leadership position if you drink wine, please. And I want to tell a such a tone for Catholic Assembly, and we know till this day I have not seen anything. But anytime, anywhere, mark my words, if I am the pastor, and if I know somebody doing this, you will never be in a leadership position. You can come, sit in church, worship, and go. Don't come and teach my kids. 
Don't come and talk to my people. Don't come and influence other people. Will never tolerate a drunkard in this church. They can come, they can worship. This is the tone of Calvary Assembly. Mark my words. Or else I have to leave. Amen. Alright. Proverbs 31, 4 and 5. Now, Proverbs 31, 4 and 5. Okay, now read. It is not wine, but for wine. It is not for come on everybody. Can I can I can I hear your word voice? It is not for kings all the way. It is not for kings to drink. Not just spiritual leadership, but even secular leadership. If you are in leadership, you shouldn't be using wine. Nor the prince of intoxicating drinks. Let them drink and forget the law. So whenever you drink wine, what do you do actually? You forget the law. I know it's a little heavy, but let's digest it. Numbers chapter 6, verse 1 to 4. This is a higher calling more than a leadership. Nazarite calling. Have you heard Nazarite calling? Hello, Nazarite calling. Have you heard Nazarite calling? Uh, like Samson was a Nazarite. In, in New Testament, John the Baptist was a Nazarite. Okay, for Nazarite. Then the Lord spoke to Moses saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, When either a man or woman consecrate, that means make a choice of a higher calling than leadership, that is a Nazarite calling. What should they? Consecrate as offering to take a vow of a Nazarite, to separate himself to the Lord. The next verse. He shall, come on everybody, he shall separate himself from wine and similar things. He shall drink neither vinegar made from wine, nor vinegar made from similar come on everybody, come on read. Neither shall he drink ah, not just wine, but even grape juice. And then what? Don't eat fresh grapes or this is a higher calling. John the Baptist had the higher calling. You know what? He has to be the pointer. He was somebody who was calling out and introducing Jesus Christ to the world. The highest calling. Brothers and sisters, if you think that you are called by God, stay away from this. Praise. Just stay away from this. Amen. Okay. I want to tell you, there are so many other verses, but you know, I just want these verses. I want to tell you, brothers, fathers, you, you, why I'm talking to these young kids? Very soon, you are preparing yourself to be a father. Yeah, you are preparing yourself to be a father, right? Become a good father. Right? More than anything else, God is against alcoholism. Okay, what do you think about God's heart? Father heart of God. When 627 times he, he used 623, four verses, 624 verses, he says, do not. That's wrong. That's debauchery. What, what do you think about Father Heart? Is Father okay with drinking wine? Come on, can I get some answer? No, no. Is Father okay with drinking wine? No. On this Father's Day, who are already fathers and who are becoming and, and you know, hoping to be a father? Let's bring some new thing in our life. You know what? I purposefully bought this message. I know it's not a Sunday message. But I want to just air this message to the whole Pentecostal community. That God is not tolerating this spirit. Amen. God will not tolerate. Hundreds of young people who are driving and getting into accidents, driving under influence. Pentecostal guys and girls, come out of this. Christians do not touch this. This is sin and God hates this. Amen. On this Father's Day, can we make our calling sure? Can we make our calling sure? Come back to the Bible, basics of the Bible. And I don't think that anybody else can prove anything other than this. The most detailed proof I have given to you. Brothers and sisters, let's take our responsibilities to share this 
and to talk about this and to stand up for this. Will you please close your eyes as we commit our life in the hands of God?